Hey you guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is actually a really, um, it's really different for me and my channel. It's something that we experienced while we were traveling in Morocco and I've got my friend Keisha here with Hi. me. She's gonna really be telling you guys about the situation that we experienced and especially for her because she was the main person involved in this situation. So I thought to myself, how could I you know, share this experience with you guys and the world without her. So I knew that I wanted to bring her onto this video so that she could really tell her story and you guys could really understand how it impacted us and how, you know, just we want to start the conversation and bring awareness of, you know, being African Americans, being of African descent and traveling, you know, globally. It's something that a lot of us are having more courage to do lately, but also there are you know situations and things that can happen that do happen so I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking at this point and allow Keisha to tell you guys her story so hi everyone so the story started we all got to the airport it was about a group of 20 of us at mm -hmm. the airport um, we were going to all check in and there were only two people at the check-in counter there was a business class and there was economy so because economy got so long and they only had one person the gentleman in business started taking some people from economy. So he took one young lady and then I came after her and he said, oh, I'm not checking you in. And I'm just like, why? Why don't you want to check me in? And he's like, I'm not checking you in. He didn't give me a reason at first. And then he calls um, a Caucasian lady from economy and says, I'll check you in. So I look at him and I'm just like, so what's the difference between me and her? Why don't you want to check me in? So I just asked him, blatantly just asked him, I was like, is it because she's white and I'm black? And he shook his head, yes. And she wasn't business class. No, so, no one was business class. And, and she was behind in. us. She was behind she's us behind in the, the line. Group. Mind you, this is about 20 people, black people in yeah. line. And he got up and pulled her out of the and line. And said he would check her in, but he wouldn't check me in. And he said, because I was black, that he was not gonna check me in. So I stood there because I'm like, no, you're not going to treat me this way. You're going to check me in too. I paid my money. I deserve the same respect. So he's adamant on he's not checking me in. So after that, he calls another Caucasian couple from the back of economy. Mind you, there's a whole group of us, African-American women. He calls a Caucasian couple from the back of the line in economy, and he said, I'll check you two in. So at this point, I'm just like, sir, you're being blatantly racist. And they were not business class. Nope, my no one business that, class. Right? No, no one is business class. class. Right, like, right. At this point, he's not checking. No one is business class mm -hmm. that he's checking in. So he's just like, he's not checking us in. He, he doesn't the want to do this at this point. Yeah, at this point, we're all just like, you can't do this to us. You cannot treat us right. this way. So he's just like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So um, they start calling security. They called the other people from the airline. And then one of the gentlemen who were with us, he works for a television station. He was the only man with us. The and only man with us. To give more context as well, if you're not familiar with Morocco, it is a country that's a part of the African continent, but mm -hmm. they are predominantly an Arab Muslim country. Uh, they speak Arabic. I think that is their, that's their, their official mm -hmm. language. And so the man that was working for the airline he was of arab descent even though it this it was an african country and the camera guy's like well i'm going to record this so people can see how you're treating us and they threatened they said they're going to take his camera away when he wouldn't give them his camera they took his passport and they're like you're not leaving they're not letting him go back to america so it was just a whole situation just got worse and worse all because one guy decided that we weren't valuable enough to be treated the same way. And the Caucasian young lady who was in the line, she just starts laughing at us. And she's just like, ha ha ha, like it was funny. She just burst out laughing at us. Like the situation was really funny. Mm -hmm. I personally felt like it was very degrading. It was very rude because we paid our money mm -hmm. just like everyone else. And if our money is valuable, why aren't we valuable? Right, exactly, exactly. And the crazy part of it too was that the white people involved did not speak up at all. She they just all looked. spoke English. I'm not sure if they were American, but they all spoke English, so they understood what was happening. And then one, the first young lady, she said, I don't want to be involved in this. Oh, so, so yeah, she did she, say, yeah, oh. she, she spoke English. She okay. said, I don't want to be involved in this. So 
I guess that's the green light for him to continue. Right. With she her. continued to he continued to check her in and she didn't stop him no. either. She, she said just, right. she said, I don't want to be involved right. in this. So I feel like that was giving him the green light that this of is course. okay. Right. Like we're okay with this. You can treat them any kind of way because exactly. we're okay with this. After the, at this point, when uh, the one man that was with our group uh, was taken away from us, because at this point there were two people working the check-in line mm -hmm. to check-in bags, so the Arab man who was on the business class side was obviously interacting with our group and at this point our group is screaming cursing yelling and some of us are trying to calm each other down but yeah. people are legitimately upset like because very upset very upset and but there was another woman of african descent that was actually checking us in so at so at one point i thought to myself why is it she saying something as someone who's african dark she, she skin, didn't say anything either. she didn't say anything but at the same time I was like, well, she was the one who was actually checking us in and making sure all of our bags were getting onto mm -hmm. our flight because we had a very short window to make yeah. it to our flight at that point. Mm -hmm. So part of me thought to myself is if she's smart, she would get us all checked in and not get involved with the situation mm -hmm. because at that point, what could have she possibly done? Nothing. She probably, she really couldn't have. And the That's way she could have done exactly, and the way that he was, he acting, was very adamant on he did not want to deal with us. Right. And we didn't approach him. Like when I first got up to the counter, I was thinking about upgrading to business class mm -hmm. so I didn't have to have, you know, a long flight right. uncomfortably. Right. But he didn't even want to talk to me about that. Wow. He was like, I don't talk about that. You can't do that here. You have to go somewhere else. Really? Like, he, I didn't know he that. Did, like he did not want to deal with me. And the same way I'm talking to you is yeah. how I was talking to him. Well, mind y'all, so, the group of us, we are women of high caliber. Yeah. We are business owners. We, I mean, entrepreneurs. We were a class of women that we're not, and not to degrade or devalue anyone at all, but this was not the group that you did that this to yeah we were we were not the group that was gonna sit there and accept it at, at all. all so when the because that's not how we presented ourselves ab absolutely not absolutely not wow so and another point i wanted to to say as well was that in this country a lot of a lot of obviously law and culture is very different than what we know mm -hmm. in america right but so with with the man that was with us, the one man, he was standing up for us because understanding that in a country like that, women aren't given the same respect as men mm -hmm. are. So that was one thing that I think also kind of gave us a, whoa, this is a, such a different culture, such a different yeah. place because in America, we would not be looked at any differently being a man versus a woman, but in Morocco, we were. Yeah. And so when the man that was with us stood up and started saying something that's why i think they started responding at an elevated level towards him yeah because they saw him reacting so so um profoundly on our behalf as all the women mm -hmm. that we were together that that's why they took his camera because other people had cameras yeah, out we we all like i think three or four of us had yeah. cameras out recording yeah. But they only targeted him. him. Absolutely. And they only took his passport. They yeah, didn't take they didn't anyone, take anyone else. else's passport. So I think that was also something to point out as well is that when you're traveling as a woman, you know, you have to keep those things in mind. Mm -hmm. And even as, as much as we hate that that's a reality, it's a reality. Yeah. And so I think that that was, that was something jarring for me to experience because I have, and you've traveled around the world. Yeah. And we both travel, most of the group has traveled yeah, around the world. and I've been to other African countries a few times. Yeah. But that was my first time actually experiencing that. Any sort of racism yeah. Or, or, yeah, sexism. I mean, it was a combination of things, so. By the time we got on the airplane, I was just trying to, you know, I tried to meditate, you know, stay peaceful, and just, I was talking to myself in my head, like, you know, this doesn't define you, this, but I just broke down in tears because... I was just like, you know, we live in America and sometimes it's hard being a black woman in America. Right. Like, people don't understand how difficult it can be sometimes to be a, a black woman. And then to be a darker skinned black woman is even a little bit more difficult. Not devaluing anyone Absolutely else's experience. Absolutely not. No, but understanding, but, like, your experience is yours. Yes. And, it's, and it has its value. So, don't so, feel, don't, don't, have just, to, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to preface that. Your experience so, is yours. Yeah. I just broke down in tears because I'm just like, when is it okay for me to be black? Right. Like, 
I'm in the country where my ancestors came from. Why is it not okay for me to be black here? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not okay for me to be black in America. Right. It's like, I didn't choose my skin. Absolutely. God chose this for me. I love it, but people can't penalize us for the skin that we're in. Right. And then what makes me so different from the other person? Absolutely. Like, we're all human. And I yeah. just, I personally, I just didn't understand how another human could treat another human that right. way. Right. Regardless of gender, regardless of color, we all have feelings. We all bleed the same. Right. So I just, I just uncontrollably started crying because right. I just couldn't understand why he would treat me in such a way. The airline told us it was our fault. They did? The security and everyone else who came up from when they took the See, passport. See, this is the know, part that I told us it got was lost. our fault. They told us it was our fault because we shouldn't have been in the business, business class. class. And then when we, I tried to explain to them, but he was taking people from the economy right. because the lines were so long. Well, there's also a language barrier too, right? So Very true. there was obviously th the predominant language is Arabic, and then a lot of people in Morocco also speak French. We had out of what 20 of us, there was only two people, yeah, one two person people. that spoke French and one person that spoke Arabic and so in the commotion of everything obviously the two that could speak the languages were trying to decipher between what was going, what was going on, on on our side and, and and trying to calm people down and then also trying to speak to the police mm -hmm. the person that was ahead of the airline and and while yes we got to go and we made our flight but it was still such a crazy situation that that easily we could have been detained in that yeah. country and mm -hmm. the other aspect i want to mention as well was that the big reason why they were trying to take his camera was because in morocco it is illegal to film inside of government buildings yes. and technically we were in a government building mm -hmm. being in an airport so that's something that i think we have to shed light on too is understanding the laws yeah, in, in these country. different countries because they may be very different than what we have the ability to do mm -hmm. in america so exactly. that that was a huge part of it too because i was recording but one of the ladies actually came over to me and said you need to delete that video. It is illegal to, to yeah, they, film here. So I had to delete my video. Well, they couldn't catch all of us. They couldn't but, catch all of us, yes. But some of us still, you know, did record the yes. injustice. But for me, it was very alarming that they sent all the women away when they came to deal with us when we were trying to get his passport back. Mm -hmm. And all the men were telling us we were wrong. Like, we were wrong for wanting to be treated fairly. We were wrong for calling out racism, blatant racism, and we were wrong for having feelings. Right. And I was just baffled right. by the fact that we all how, were. Can, how can I be wrong for being human? Right, exactly. And I want to also just talk about that moment on the flight when you were sobbing. I mean, y'all, she was... It crying so and I mean it was incredibly emotional because all of our seats were very close to each mm -hmm. other so we could basically touch each of e each other from where we were all sitting and the emotion that she was expressing it had us all in tears like I was very hurt like I I was I was just hurt like I was yeah. crushed because I've always wanted to you know go to the my ancestors go see you know where my ancestors were okay. um that's always been why i visit africa because mm -hmm. i'm like this is where i feel a part you know this is a part of me right so to have that experience it was it was it was deeper than just of course him. Of it course. was deeper than okay so where do i fit in now right where can i be a it black forced, woman? it made you question even your own lineage which yeah. is that that like, that's heartbreaking on its own. Like, when am I going to feel comfortable in a country to just be me? Right. Like right. to be judged by my character right. and not by my skin color. Right. So for me, it went a lot deeper than just that his one actions. situation. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, that you it, can it feel really that. Cut. Like it really, yeah. it really cut deep. Because right. I'm just like, when am I gonna be okay to right. ex express myself? Right. And then anyone who knows me knows I'm not like a rude boisterous person mm -hmm. so I could just couldn't understand why he would treat me that way right and I just could I couldn't control the tears I couldn't right. control the emotions right. so when we were on the plane um, one of the flight attendants he did you know he yes. Came up uh, and yes he did apologize for that man's behavior and he said they would do something about it I don't know if they did because no right. one ever contacted me mm -hmm. they took my information okay but no one contacted right. me so right. I don't know what 
And I think that gesture that. alone, I mean, it him, didn't make me feel right. Like, it made me in feel that moment a lot better. Right. Like he showed me, he's like, you know, we're we're sister and brother. He mm -hmm. showed me a picture of his father, and his father oh, was wow. like, yeah, his father was like dark like me. Yeah. And he was just like, you're my sister. He's like, some people just haven't woken up to realize that we're all one. Right. He's like, it's all about you know peace and love and loving each right. other and living in harmony. And I, that's how I feel. I feel like. No matter your background, your lineage, whatever, we're all one. We all came from the same source. Absolutely. So since we're all human, let's treat each other Absolutely. as if we're human. And and I think, you know, it's 2018. Exactly. It's 2018 and we are still experiencing these these situations of in, in inequality and mm -hmm. oppression mm -hmm. and suppression you know it's it was baffling to me as as to all of us it was just experiencing it in 2018 we were with a group that we had just come from this incredible Amazing. week together I mean unbelievable a, a amount of energy that was mm -hmm. just super uplifting super supportive super peaceful peaceful and just celebrating our blackness and celebrating being women mm -hmm. and so and then our love and support for each other it, as women. yes and that it was such a unifying experience so mm -hmm. to have this situation hit us right when we try to go back to the u.s yeah. that was it was it was a crazy thing, but one thing that I, I also wanted to touch on was that when Jerome st stood up, the man that was with us, um, mm -hmm. I'll put his information down below because you guys should definitely check out his, his information and his art that he creates with videography. Um, he stood up and he told us we're going to pray. And yeah. all of us took hands yeah. and was, he just, was it was a moment where he just led us in prayer mm -hmm. and explained that, you know, God knows the greatness that was created in exactly. on our trip and so does Satan. Mm -hmm. And Satan was gonna do everything in his power to bring us down. Mm -hmm. And he probably picked the exact thing that, that would, would make get us, to us. Yes, that would get to us. Because it touched on race, it touched on us being women. Yeah. And those are the two exact things that we were so excited and proud of uh, from our trip. And so he just really put it out there and said, We're not gonna let, let this experience this. ruin all yes. that we built up this whole Absolutely. week. All that we worked for this whole time. Don't let this one experience deter us from visiting the continent of Africa again. Of to loving our blackness right so i was just so excited about the prayer after the prayer i felt so like, much better uh, yeah i felt like a weight had just been lifted yes. off my shoulders that was put on by yes. that situation yes. i was just like you know what i'm not gonna let this one situation change how i feel about my homeland right. how i feel about my black skin right. or how i feel about people who just they haven't woken up yet to right we're all one exactly and that's I think that prayer was so crucial to us just even healing from that moment just yes. before I think if that wouldn't have happened we would have all really walked away mm -hmm. feeling so down and feeling so defeated but because of that prayer it really picked us all back up yes. as a group and exactly. we continued on for the rest of the day and made it safely back to the US and you know it kind of even brought us closer, closer. As I would a say group. it definitely brought us yes, closer yes it, it really did because and yeah, go the, ahead. like the love and support everyone showed me when I was going through my emotions, I was just like, "This is sisterhood. Oh, like, absolutely. this is what sisterhood yeah. is all about." Yeah. Like, if you see your sister hurt, they were giving me words of encouragement. They were telling me, "You know, don't let this. You're beautiful. Right. Your blackness is beautiful. Right. Don't let this change how you feel about right. you or how you feel about people who are just ignorant." Mm -hmm. So it was just that sisterhood that I was just like, you know what? I love this connection that yes. we're making as women. How supportive and how loving we were to each other right. in our time, in my time of need. Right, and that's I think the power of unity mm -hmm. is when you know that you're not, you were not alone in that no. situation. Because, like, while I am biracial, I'm light skinned. I understand the gravity of that situation towards you. I may not be able to exactly feel it as you mm -hmm. felt it. But I can sympathize and empathize so much because my mother is your skin color. Yeah. So when you were going through that situation, which is why it even it hit me on such a deep level, was because I was like, "That's my mother. Mm -hmm. Like that. That is. Ev that's every woman in my family. That is people that I've looked up to over my lifetime. You know. And so I think that 
that experience was a really a huge eye opener, but also kind of like that extra bit of like push. push like, to, this is what we got to do what yeah, we're doing. This is what we need to change. This is why right. we have to get our messages out there. And this is why we, it is important to elevate and, and push out our voices mm -hmm. because things like that still happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's to, to kind of start wrapping this up a bit. That's why I wanted to bring Keisha here and talk to you all about that experience because no it wasn't a physical altercation it was a spiritual altercation agreed it was a spiritual altercation that really tried to take all of us out but we did not allow it to we were, so we our strength and our love for each other is i think what pushed us through oh absolutely absolutely and so just for you all out there who are considering traveling globally and traveling while black mm -hmm. uh just keep in mind that these things do happen and it's not to detour you from going outside of the country because i still want to go back to morocco yeah i'm still i still want to go, go back, back to, to africa i'm gonna fly a different airline right okay <laughs> definitely gonna fly yes. a different airline but and and to read it right it was royal air Morocco yes. that we flew and had the issue with so I'm still waiting on a phone call from them um, no one so. has reached out to me from that airline yet so I'm maybe I'm gonna follow up with them because I feel like something should be done mm -hmm. I should at least get an apology for something them or something right exactly. an acknowledgement right of my feeling absolutely because it was it was their it was their error not anyone Agreed. else's so so with that being said travel go out be who you are do what you want to do, but understand that for people that look like us, it may be a situation where we just have to be a little bit more aware. And mm -hmm. I hope and pray that as time goes on and more people speak out about injustices like mm -hmm. this, small or large, that we'll get to a point where this won't happen at all. You can go anywhere and you can feel safe and you can feel like you'll be treated equally as everyone and else. And if you see it happening to someone else, say something. Say something. Say, you know what, that's not right. Exactly. I think once it gets to the point where everyone says something, people will start to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. But if you just stand by and do nothing, they're going to think it's okay. Exactly. Stand up and say something if you see injustice towards anyone, whether it's another man, woman, a person from another culture. What is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter where you live, where you're from. Stand up for what is right because being a bystander and not saying anything, mm -hmm. you're just you're as just guilty. As so thank you again so much, Keisha, for, for sharing, absolutely, sharing your story and telling my audience, and hopefully my audience shares this with more people. Mm -hmm. I know this is not the end of us shedding light on situations like this. Mm -hmm. um, we plan to do more, whether yeah. that be sign petitions, whether that be writing letters, you know, we're coming up with a game plan. So if you, anyone out there has um, connections or people that should know about this type of story or have similar stories, please share them and let's bring more awareness about you know situations like this where it's just time to step up and say this is not okay and, and we're if not anyone knows anyone anymore. at Royal Air Maroc tell them I'm still waiting on that call exactly okay <laughs> still waiting on that call amazing so thank you guys so much for watching um, again if you have any thoughts prayers questions put them down below and we'll be sure to, to connect you with her I'll put her information down there if you want to send encouraging words or any sort of love her way please do thank you so much for watching and until next time I'll see you in the next video bye bye